All right, this video is going to go through Calypso offline base alignment and stylus qualification. So from the desktop, we click on the Calypso 2014 icon, and it's going to go through some startup menus. The first one is the login. There's no password, so we just click OK. And then Clipso goes through some other startup windows till it gets to the main inspection page. So this is the main start page. So from here, we want to click on Create New Measurement Plan. And that's in this center window in the top left. And we click that and we go to the main inspection or measurement plan. So there's tabs on the left side. The first one is a CMM where we have CMM settings in the stylus system. The measurement tab where we create a base alignment. We create our clearance plane or clearance cube and then we set the printout. And then the last two tabs are characteristics and features. So we measure features and we report characteristics. So we're going to start out on the CMM tab because we're going to build a stylus system. So we click on the stylus system and the stylus system window or probing system qualification window opens and depending on what stylus system is in the active box or the stylus system that's been used less we want to change that to the master probe so we click on the manual stylus system change icon and then we want to pick up a stylus system and we're going to pick up the master probe so we click on that button it says insert stylus system so now this offline is identical to the machine Calypso so the only difference is you don't have a physical machine or a physical part so it's still stepping you through all the steps of Calypso machine so we click OK for the insert stylus system and then on this stylus system drop down we select the master pro and then we click OK and then we close this simulation box for picking up and releasing the stylus system and now we have our master probe is our active stylus system so this has a green checkbox so it's been qualified but we want to go through and qualify that so we step through each step of the process so we click on the reference sphere position so that's really what this master probe does it finds the location of this reference sphere so it goes through several windows and we just click through those OK and we click OK on this simulation window and it qualified our master probe we get the green checkbox and the simulation window opens so now we want to create a stylus system so there's a couple ways that you can do that we can go through the manual change icon or we can just insert a stylus system so we're going to insert a stylus system so we click on the insert stylus system icon and we're going to name the stylus system my name and today's date and the name of the first stylus is going to be one underscore minus Z and we're going to follow this diagram in the simulation window or the stoplight window and the number one stylus is pointing in the Z minus direction so we're going to name this one underscore minus Z and this drop down for the stylus number is very important to pay attention to we want to make sure that we're selecting the right stylus number this number one stylus is the minus Z location so we've got the right one there so we click OK and now we're going to insert a stylus so we click on the insert new stylus icon and we're going to go back and reference our stylus system identification 
So we're just going to qualify 1, 2, and 5 because that's all we're going to use in this class. So we're going to name this stylus 2 underscore and it's in the plus y direction. So we're going to name it plus y and we click OK. Now we're going to insert another stylus so we click on the insert new stylus button and we're going to reference our diagram so we want number 5 so we need to select the stylus number as 5 and we're going to name that 5 underscore and this is in the minus x direction so we're going to name it 5 underscore minus x and we click OK. So we've built all of our stylus for our stylus system number one, number two, and number five and if we click on this drop down we can see each one of those so we're going to click on that drop down and select the first one one underscore minus z and it has a red x because it hasn't been qualified so we're going to click on the qualify stylus icon and then we click OK and we get the green check so we know that it's qualified. We're going to go back up to our stylus name drop down, select number 2. We have a red X because it's not qualified so we click on the qualify stylus button and we click through the screens OK and in our simulation view we see that number 2 is selected and we click OK and we get the green checkbox check mark and we know it's qualified. Then we click on the stylus name drop down again and we select number five and we can look at our simulation window in our stylus system diagram and we have number five selected and we click on the qualify stylus button and we click OK and we get the green checkbox so we know it's qualified. So now we've created a stylus system and we've qualified each stylus. So we can click OK. So the next thing we want to do is to import our CAD model. <clears throat> so we click on the CAD file menu item and then CAD file and then load and the open CAD file window opens and we select the CAD cube.sat file and we click open and our CAD model shows up in the graphics window. So now it shows up as a wireframe model and that's not going to do us any good for measuring. We need to have surfaces on this. So on the lower toolbar there is a button that is show CAD models with surfaces. We click that and we get the surfaces in our CAD model. So now to manipulate around this CAD model if we scroll the mouse wheel we can zoom in and out. If we press and hold the right mouse button we can rotate the CAD model and if we press and hold the left mouse button we can pan. So we're going to set this up so we can measure these features. So I'm going to rotate the CAD model around so that I can see those and measure them. And now I want to go up to the top menu and my stylus selection. Right now it's number five because that's the last one I qualified. I want to change that to number one because I'm going to be measuring with that Z minus stylus. So I select that and we need to go down to the bottom toolbar again and there's a select or create geometries from the CAD model icon and we select that drop down and we need to select the define points. That's going to allow us to measure points on this CAD model. So we click that and now we're ready to start measuring. So we just click on the surface and Clipso starts to identify the feature type that we're measuring and I'm going to measure three points because we're going to do a very simple 3 two, one alignment and this is for the base alignment and that base alignment is me telling the CMM where that part is on the CMM. 
So Calypso identifies this as a plane. We click OK because that's what we want. I'm going to click uh, on this front surface. I'm going to measure a line and we want to measure from left to right. So we click two points for the line. Calypso in the feature window identified this as a line which is what we want. We click OK and then I'm going to click on the left surface as a single point and we click OK. So now we've measured three features, our 3 to one alignment, a plane line and a point. So now we need to create the base alignment. So we go back to the measurement tab and we click on that and we click on the base alignment icon and the base alignment window comes up and it's create a new base alignment which is what we want because we haven't created one yet and we click OK and then our base alignment window opens and we need to select the features to create our base alignment so we click in this box which allows us to select the features so the selection window opens and for the spatial rotation that's going to be my top plane I select that and it shows in the graphics display the top plane populates this spatial rotation box we click OK click on the planar rotation and for the planar rotation I'm going to select my 2D line in the front and it identifies that in the graphics display and I click OK and my X origin is going to be the point which is my left surface and I click OK my Y origin is going to be the 2D line and it displays that and that's what I want I click OK and my Z origin is going to be the plane and I click OK now before I click OK on the space alignment I just want to go through and verify that I've selected the right surfaces so my spatial rotation is plane 1 the planar rotation is the 2D line in the front my X origin is the point on the left the Y origin is the line in the front and the Z origin is the plane on the top and that's correct so I'm going to select OK so now I've created my base alignment and again that base alignment is me telling the CMM where that part is. So when we take this offline program and we move it to a physical CMM we have to tell the software where that part is going to be on the CMM and that's what that base alignment does. So the next step is to create a clearance plane so we go back to the measurement tab and the clearance plane icon and we select that and our clearance plane window opens and because we're doing this offline we're just going to create a clearance plane from the CAD model so we click on that button it gives us an edge distance and that's the distance that plane is going to be around that cube and we just click OK and now it displays our clearance plane around that entire CAD model and we click OK goes through some confirmation windows we just click yes another confirmation we click OK and now we've created a clearance plane around our CAD model so now we can start measuring features so the next step we want to do is to measure another alignment so we're going to do another 3 2 1 alignment and this is for the CMM to find the part so when I take this program and I move it to a physical CMM I'm going to go through the base alignment which is me telling the CMM and the software where the part is on the volume of that CMM and then the second alignment is going to be the CMM finding that part because when I put that part in the same position it's going to be off a little bit it's going to be skewed or rotated a little bit so this alignment is going to help find the part and create a fine-tuned alignment so we're just going to start measuring again on 3 2 1 alignment so I click on the top surface three points identified as a plane we click OK I do two points on the front for a line it shows up as a 2D line I click OK 
and then I select the left surface for my single point and I click OK and now I've measured a plane 2, a line 2 and a point 2. So now I need to create an alignment from those points so I click on the menu, resources, utilities and alignment. And now I have a blank alignment, there's nothing in here so I need to populate that so I double click that and my alignment window comes up and it's very similar to the base alignment. I need to select my features to create this alignment. So for the spatial rotation when I click on that I select my plane 2 which is that same top surface. Click OK. The planar rotation is line 2. I click OK. And my X origin is point 2 on the left side of the part and I click OK. The Y origin is the 2D line in front and I click OK. And the Z origin is plane 2 and I click OK. And I just want to confirm that everything is correct. My spatial rotation, planar rotation, the X origin point, the Y origin is 2D line and the Z origin on plane 2 and I click OK. So now I've created an alignment. Now I can start measuring features and reporting characteristics and then I can print those out. So the next video will detail how to do that.